So we had breaking news a couple hours ago. If you've not seen, Jonathan Taylor has requested a trade from the Indianapolis Colts following the ongoing dispute of trying to, of contract negotiations as top as well as Jim Ursay's the Colts owner uh, comments. Originally, a few days ago, he did put out talking about dealing in bad business. It seemed like he was taking a shot at Jonathan Taylor and then uh, kind of walked back the statement saying he wasn't talking about him, talking about something else. We all know it was on Jonathan Taylor. And then following, also following the Jonathan Taylor uh, request, he also came out and said that they have no plans to trade this, the running back. And on top of that, too, also add this quote saying, quote, if I die tonight and Jonathan Taylor is out of the league, no one's going to miss us. The league goes on. We know that. The National Football League rolls on. It doesn't matter who comes in and who goes. It's a privilege to be part of it. Doesn't help. Those two comments don't really help the situation either. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a very tricky situation. I mean, right off the bat, he's not leaving the, the Colts. It's a, same, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a negotiation tactic. It's not going to do too much because both sides know it, it's not going to happen. I mean, the Colts have the leverage here. They they they'll decide if Jonathan Taylor leaves or not, and if they if they're hell bent on not him not leaving, he's not leaving. Uh, it, I view a, a very similar situation to basically a mirror of Saquon Barkley, similar situation where he felt disrespect in the contract negotiations. He threatened to sit out week one. Of course, right before they signed the contract, there was rumors of a trade. Miami was trying to acquire Saquon before he signed his one-year deal, which is basically a franchise tag and just a small uh, bump in a, in a raise, one or two million more. And I view it similar to, to Jonathan Taylor because the Colts know his value. He is a vital piece for his upcoming season for Anthony Richardson. He, he is going to take a lot of the pressure off of Richardson and help him develop as a quarterback in his rookie year. Because if Jonathan Taylor was not on the roster and you hit, you're rolling with Zach Moss, it's going to be hell for, for Richardson in his rookie year because teams are going to put the pressure on him because they don't respect the running back behind them. And it's going to make it a lot worse for Richardson. But when you have Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, it, teams are going to have to, have to uh, respect him. And they're going to kind of send, you know, send him a more blitzes, Bring the linebackers up a little bit closer to the line to try and stop Jonathan Taylor if they can run the ball well. And it's going to open up the field for Richardson, throw it over the, over their heads, and get his confidence going, get his game going, and develop him and, and obviously move forward to being the quarterback that they, that they believe he will turn out to be. Uh, I mean, people people viewed him as the next Josh Allen or some of Josh Allen because of his, make, you know, his makeup. He has a size, a strong arm, mobile. And if he can develop into that with the pieces that he has around them for his rookie year, no doubt that is it's it's huge. Especially, I think you could say for this upcoming season, you could argue the most important piece in the offense is Jonathan Taylor because what he does can make or break Anthony Richardson's rookie year and how people perceive Richardson because of that. So the Colts know that that the, the, the Colts know the value. They don't want to pay him top dollar, but they know he's a top back in the NFL. He was both top ten by executives, by scouts, by players, he was on that list. So clearly the Colts put their put the, you know, put their two cents in on Jonathan Taylor and where he ranks, so they, they know. And it's it's very unfortunate for the running back situation because it's it's me it's been very interesting for the 2023 season of how this plays out because we had the ordeal with Saquon which got uh you know, re, you know, kind of solved for this year and we'll have the same, you know, same situation that this next offseason. But you have Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, Dalvin Cook, free agency so far, and uh, right now Jonathan Taylor, and, and so much more. It's gonna be very, it's gonna be very interesting to see how the landscape works out for this upcoming season for running backs. Um, what's guy? I, I I do view, I I do see Taylor be on the Colts this year. I view this what's guy very similar to the Saquon ordeal. I think he'll sign a, a one or two year deal. Uh, get a little bit more, a little bit of a pay, a pay raise, but ultimately it's going to be probably around the same money because just it, it's it's unfortunate how the, the landscape for running backs is going. I do agree with them saying that it's it's kind of BS with the whole landscape of running backs and the perception of it. I hate the argument when people say that you can just replace them easily. You can't with these type of guys. You can't replace. You can't easily just replace a Saquon, a Jonathan Taylor, uh, a Dalvin Cook. It's it's not easy to do that. Um, 
if I, once again, if I look at the Colts again, I'm not. I apologize for not knowing the the, the the roster entirely for running backs. The only one I know is they have was Zach Moss. So I, I just keep kind of pointing towards to Zach Moss. But I'm sorry if you if you took Jonathan Taylor the roster right now and put in Zach Moss and you told me, and you try to make the argument saying that he can give the, the same production if not close to the same production as Taylor. It's BS. I'm sorry. You're lying to yourself. You don't know what you're talking about. You can't just easily replace these guys. Uh, you know, Derek Henry's the the Christian McCaffrey's. You can't you can't replace them. I'm sorry. They're just they're too good. And I was and for you know for McCaffrey and them, they're getting paid great for a reason. And I do believe Taylor should get his money, but it's unfortunate. I unfortunately he's not going to. It's it's gonna be the same situation as Saquon. He'll get 11, 12 million for one year or so. And we'll be, we'll be in the same situation once again next year. We'll probably franchise tag him, and it's just it's just going to keep going. It's unfortunate. Uh, I do I do I do side with Jonathan Taylor on this one. I do think he need, he should get his money. The the thing that sucks is that this past year hurts him. He had a down year, but part of it too is the rest is the rest of the team had a down year. It, it's not solely on him. It's not because he regresses a player or he's he's slowing down of age. It's just it was it was an off year for everybody, and I don't think they should be held against him. I think they should look at twenty twenty and one and say that is the type of player he is. And if you look at Jonathan Taylor's stats for the three years, this is I mean, it wasn't horrible. Obviously, obviously you look at from twenty twenty one, he had over eighteen hundred yards, eighteen touchdowns, and this past year he had eight hundred sixty one yards, four touchdowns. So it's a huge regression in that. But look at the first two years. His rookie year, he had over 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, and we just mentioned 2021. That should be the sample size. That should be more enough to tell you what the type of player he is, what the type of running back he is. Not this past year where everyone was horrible. Every It was so dysfunctional for the Colts this past year. That shouldn't be the measuring stick of how to pay Jonathan Taylor. It should be the, his rookie year, the 2020-2021 season. Those two, His first two years in the league, that should be the measuring stick and telling you he is one of the top running backs, and this is what he can do for you. Not looking at 2022, the down year that everyone had, and saying, "Oh, that's the we can't pay you because you hit because of that because you had a regression in stats. You were, you had a regression of a season that should be held against him. I'm sure the Colts are definitely doing that. It's unfortunate, but no doubt Jonathan Taylor is one of the best running backs in the league. And how I you know if my team was able to have him, I would take him. I, I mean, I love James Cook. I, I do think he'll be. A, He'll be a great player, but I, I'm sorry. If I had the opportunity to take Jonathan Taylor, I'll take him off the, the cold sands. I'm sorry he is. He, he's a phenomenal running back, and it's unfortunate that he's, you know, just like him and many other, uh, many other of the top backs in the league, that they're kind of just getting disrespected for the money. It's, a, it's unfortunate. Hope, uh, I don't know how long it's going to keep going on, because the problem is, too, that the, 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 the franchise tag keeps going up every single year for each position, so it's going to get to a, a, a point where if the money – per year isn't rising for the running backs the salary or the the franchise tag will meet up to the top money that teams don't want to pay for and it's gonna to get to a point where teams are gonna be in dilemma where it's like well we don't want to sign you long you know long term because of big money we also want to franchise tag you because that's matches what the top dollar is and then they don't know what to do it's, it's very unfortunate it's gonna be very interesting to see in the next few years what's gonna happen with the top running backs in the nfl and the ones that are becoming off the rookie deals like Najee Harris, B.J. Robinson in a few years, uh, Jamari Gibbs, Etienne Walker. It's, it's going to be interesting what the landscape of the running back market is going to be and if it's going to fix itself, if teams are going to be willing to, or it's going to be just, it's going to get a lot worse. But yeah, it's very unfortunate what's going on with the, not just Jonathan Taylor, but everyone in general. But I'm going to kind of wrap it up here. Don't want to make it too much of a, a long video of me rambling on. Just want to get my, my thoughts on the whole situation. Not with Taylor, but with everyone, regardless of, in the league. But let me know your thoughts down below on the Jonathan Taylor situation. Do you think he will stay with the Colts? Or would you think eventually they will trade him off somewhere else? And, but if he does stay, what type of money do you think he's going to get? Let me know down below. But with that being said, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.